So I recently saw a really interesting video and it got me thinking about the validity of investing in modern. Now this is one of those things that people will debate backwards and forwards, up and down, left and right for years gone by and probably years to come. The truth of the matter is, is that it can be confusing investing in modern because we simply can't hold it up to or compare it against investing in vintage because it's just two completely different wheelhouses. However, in today's video, I'll tell you about the decision I recently made and more importantly, tell you why I am committed to continuing in at least passively investing in sealed modern Pokemon cards. But first, roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, I explain to you why I'm committed now more than ever to passively investing in modern Pokemon cards. Now, I mentioned in the intro to the video that I recently saw a video, and in full uh, transparency, it was ZNG Emporium's most recent video. Um, he raises some really excellent points. I'll have a link to it down below. It's a really, really awesome video. Love his YouTube channel, by the way. If you don't know, he's another one of um, the YouTubers that is very similar in uh, style, format, and general content, much like myself. So very primarily financially driven, a little bit of investment, a little bit of, um, you know, meme foolishness that goes on in between. And that's just kind of how it is, right? Uh, but it's all good, it's all fun, and more importantly, he has become a very respected source of authority in the hobby, which is why I am a frequent viewer of his videos, as well as um, like to sometimes even borrow and incorporate some of the points or the lessons that he raises in his videos in the way that I go about distributing and delivering content for my own channel as well. Now, all that said, the video um, he posted said he doesn't invest in modern and um, he raises one point which is he is going to invest in booster boxes maybe. And ironically enough, that's exactly how I would summarize the following, eh, give or take 13 minutes of your time. Because that's exactly what I was thinking the entire time and so when he finally said it at the end of his video, I was like, okay good, at, like, at least I'm not dying on this hill alone. Now, what does all that mean? So, when it comes to modern Pokemon cards, there are a couple of fundamental things you need to understand if you're even at all planning on purchasing it for the intentions of holding it and for the intentions of letting it appreciate over time. The first is that modern Pokemon cards have been printed, and they have been printed in incredibly high volume. The second thing you need to understand is that for everything that has been printed, there has been another quote-unquote stonk master investor who has taken some of it and put it on a, a, like a shelf somewhere. And whether that shelf is on YouTube, you know, in the background, or it's never to be seen in their mom's basement, wherever it is, you know for a fact it's there. So I promise you, because I've seen on Facebook some of these dudes and some of these dudettes, and they have stacks of sealed boxes. So may I just say, second thing to understand, tons of competition in the future. Third thing to understand, the stuff has been opened maliciously. A lot of people have gone out of their way to um, have this stuff opened up, sorted through, you know, collections have been made, etc, etc. Third thing, this stuff has been submitted to PSA maliciously. Sorry, that was the fourth thing, I think. Um, so, graded cards are borderline out of the question. The only graded cards I would ever recommend uh, purchasing would be staff promos. So the ones that came out where there were some really cool staff stamped cards that came out. They, those got stopped in at Vivid Voltage because, you know, staff just was being stupid about it and the stuff was being sold for exorbitant prices pre-release style and then the other thing the fifth thing to consider is that um there's a really interesting dynamic with modern pokemon the thing is is that for the most part there's still one or two or three cards in a set at maximum that you want to chase down chances are those cards are either 
a ultra rare full art, a full art trainer, or a alternate art card. So sometimes it's the Lugia from Lost Thunder, which is a super dope, good looking card. People like it in both the rainbow and the regular full art version. Sometimes it's a full art trainer, like a waifu card. And other times it's going to be some sort of alternate art card, like the Tyranitar from Battle Styles. But no matter the case, there's usually a few cards that are out there that you're chasing down. The problem is, is that the pool of overall ultra rares is also incredibly high. So the thing is, is that while it might be wise for you to purchase a couple copies of this card, I don't necessarily think it's the best way of investing in modern Pokemon cards. The truth of the matter is, there's too many factors that can go wrong when it comes to this stuff, and the fact that single individual cards um get graded with the you know high velocity that they do nowadays it's going to be really interesting to see how the next 18 months play out and you all know that i'm not one to say the next 18 months as a phrase all that often but the reason i say that is because as psa cgc and bgs begin to update their population reports or establish their population reports in the case of CGC, it'll be fascinating to see how many of these cards got graded in between that period of time where uh, COVID-19 basically caused the shutdown of everything. So it's one of those situations, right? I think if you're going to invest, the best thing to do, as ZNG said and like I thought, is going to be invest in sealed product. So that's how I've gone about it. Now on screen right now, you're seeing uh, just a very quick eBay search for Pokemon team up. And if you sort high to low, what you'll find is there are a few interesting tidbits here, but I wanted to walk you all through some of the different things that you'll see. Now I'll tell, you know, I'll, I'll strongly suggest what you should ignore and what you shouldn't. Ignore the first one, a uh, sealed build and battle box bundle. You can skip that. Um, it, it looks nice because it's a comprehensive collection, but at $7,000, probably overpriced. You've got the stab set of the full art rares. Now, these I like. These, um, I think the price is way too high. I think if they went up for auction, you'd be far better off. But they are PSA 10s. They are the staff promos and they are not full art as I said earlier I apologize about that they are stamped so each of them has the stamp of the set on it as well so these are pretty cool bear in mind you also get a Charizard and a Jirachi both of which I think will fare very well and age very well into the future uh, next up is the mini booster packs you could skip that you could skip the PSA 9s no one cares about 9s especially for modern Pokemon cards I cannot stress that enough they are cheap now. Trust me, buy them as PSA 10s. I don't know how much more they're going to go up, but PSA 9s are not it, sis. It's just not right. Next up, and here's where things start getting interesting, is the sealed cases. So this is the sealed booster case, it looks like. This is the one that has 144 individual sleeved boosters in it. Um, and I've seen these go for a pretty decent price. So you know, wouldn't surprise me if this kind of stuff um, stays pretty pretty high and pretty valuable. Uh, next up is, here's an interesting one, it's the cello pack of the Charizard staff promo. So this is all four promo cards sealed in the cello pack and it got graded, so that's a really neat one. Um, you know, you've got, yeah, you can start scrolling down and seeing more. Obviously, you have a couple cases, but you have the build and battles. So that is my, you know, that's where I currently sit with some of this stuff, right? The thing is, is that I truly believe that there are some opportunities here that will exceed others in the future. As I mentioned, any graded tr uh, trading card from the set is probably not going to hold its water over time. The reason I say that is because there is a large number of those cards that exist graded and we know for a fact that there will only be more added on over time. So put a different way, the population is going to get more and more and we know for a fact that everyone and their mom has one of these cards. At that point, it's not going to be hard finding them even when they are 10 or 15 year old vintage cards. The thing is, is that I say that, and you may disagree with me by pointing out things like Heart Gold, Soul Silver, the Black and White Era, etc, etc. Now I do agree that those cards have gone up in value. 
And similarly, I will be fully transparent in saying, well, yes, modern Pokemon cards too will also go up in value. That is not a secret and it's not something that I intend on hiding or pretending won't happen because these cards will begin to appreciate in value over time. The problem is that I don't think there is going to be a optimal way of, you know, really coming out the best as you possibly can because the truth of the matter is is that the growth potential for some of the older sets that I just mentioned isn't simply there with sets like this that have been graded to you know heck and back and have a very thorough very documented history of being printed opened stored as gem mint or near mint and then sent off to PSA at the first Pokemon special you got so the truth of the matter is there's a lot of the stuff out there and it's simply not going to carry the premium that you're used to seeing on vintage Pokemon cards as vintage is defined right now. Hit me up in like 20 years and we'll see if that definition of vintage carries the same premium that the current definition does. And I think that's the point that I'm trying to get at here. The other thing to bear in mind is that there are some interesting things. So something like the, uh, you know, staff cards, I think these are really cool little interesting tidbits. And I think this can open up an interesting avenue. I bet these are definitely going to go up in value because they're unique to a particular era and generation. and they're stamped, they're unique, etc, etc. And then, finally but not least, is something like the sealed product. Now this is where I'm going to hang my hat in terms of a strategy for myself. And again, bear in mind, this is not financial advice, this is not me acting as your financial advisor, this is me telling you what I plan on doing. Now if you choose to uh, make any decisions, those decisions should be of your own free will, and more importantly, they should be based on something more authoritative than a YouTuber with 1100 subscribers, so there is that. Anyways, my thing, and my theory, is that we know for a fact there's going to be tons of cards out there, so we know for a fact whether they're loose, single, or graded, you're going to have tons of supply. The thing is, is that every time one of these boxes gets opened, that overall sealed supply goes down. That's literally the nature of sealed product. As more of it gets opened, the overall supply goes down. So that's a good thing because that implies that there could be additional scarcity that there isn't right now for this product in the future. In theory, that's what's happening to first edition base set boxes right now. Because as we saw more and more box breaks happen in 2020 and early 2021, the price of a sealed first edition base set booster box went up dramatically because for each one that's opened and every new PSA 10 or 9 hollow that's graded, the truth of the matter is there is now a sealed booster box that no longer exists and that's something you can't take back. Said another way, that bell cannot be unrun. The other thing is that we know for a fact there are going to be tons of people with this stuff that pop up. The thing is, is that people have different aspirations. So for some people or, you know, investors, they bought this stuff at 100 bucks, and now that they can sell it for $1,600, they are more than happy with that. So they sell out and then those are either absorbed into collections or opened up, etc, etc. The other thing is that sometimes people run games and things of the nature with the stuff. Bear in mind, some of the folks that purchase this stuff and put it away have very clear intentions behind it. For example, for me, if I buy this stuff and put it away, I either plan on using it in later YouTube videos or more likely plan on letting it appreciate in hopes of continuing to further my own actual collection goals. So it's one of those situations. Sometimes it doesn't need to be about how many sealed products are out there because for one reason or the other we know that at, at any given moment there's only a certain percentage of that sealed product that's actually on the market actively being sold and realistically although the overall population is what matters there is an argument to be made that only the stuff currently listed on the market is should what be considered in, in determining overall supply so something to bear in mind um, and then, yeah, I think that's what you do, right? None of this stuff is going to make you a millionaire. If I can, you know, begin to wrap up the video in a very clear and concise way, the one thing I will say is that none of this stuff is going to make you a millionaire in the way that first edition base set, Neo Genesis, the EX era will. Because, flat out and simply, there's just too much of this stuff. And frankly, it doesn't have the same level of nostalgia and fanfare that base set will have or the ex or the you know watsi era will have that's just the raw truth of the matter 
There is, however, a group of little kids right now that are about 10 years old that fondly remember the set, and in about 15 to 20 years, there will be a pretty compelling reason why they will want to come back and purchase this stuff at a higher price because they'll want to recapture their childhood the same way all these 30 and 40 year old dudes right now are doing the exact same thing just with first edition base set. Again, the number is, incre is incrementally larger in terms of quantity of this stuff, so the price will be proportionately smaller than the prices we're seeing right now. But I do think if you have some sealed product, you'll be very well off coming into the future because there's an opportunity there for you to capitalize on that forecasted demand well in the future. But with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, feel free to leave a like on the video. And if you're not already, feel free to join our happy little community by clicking the subscribe button to join the Gengar gang. As always, I'll be in the comments if you guys want to chit-chat about investing in modern, and definitely feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But other than that, thanks again for checking out another video, and we will talk soon. Peace.